show them what it looks like down there. Yeah, that's not a pretty sight. But we're going to try anyway to revive this motor. Because you needed to see this. What's in the bottom of this looks like something out of a baby diaper. Hi guys, Redneck Computer Geek here. So John and I are up here with this Kohler V-Twin that, well, I, I, I traded for it. And I definitely got the worst end of the deal on the trade, but I do want a full disclaimer that it is not the fault of the individual that I traded with. This was one of those experiences where I want to pass on just how I got screwed by my own not paying attention. So, mouse nest. So I bought coils. Yeah, there's more. So mouse nest. So I bought coils. And then... We pop this open. Now, really, in all honesty, I should have known what I was about to find the moment I pulled this off. So if I set this aside, yeah, that is entirely pitted, full of rust. No love whatsoever. That looks like something that came out of a sunken shipwreck. Even the filter has rust growing in it. The bottom of that has rust growing in it. That's our nice new SATA set we're going to work with. Oh, this, that we have this on as a catch tray, this is the bottom of a dog kennel, a small one. You can actually buy these on Amazon for about 14 bucks a piece. I'll post a link for that. I thought that was great. So look at this carburetor. This carburetor doesn't look that bad, does it? So why is there a new one sitting there? Well, that would be because if we take this carburetor and we look at the side of it, can you see that? You know what that tells me? That tells me that water came down in and was able to flood this carburetor enough that it froze and it exploded out the side. So... I ordered a carburetor, but I didn't bother investigating the motor any further because I figured, oh, you know, how bad could it be? It's just a carburetor. So new carburetor came in. I tried to jump a starter. The starter made really bad noises and that didn't move. Nope. That didn't move. So now we have a head gasket kit. My theory at this point is that water went down through the carburetor, into the intake, into both of the cylinders, probably rusted it up, probably froze while it was in there. We're going to tear it down and we're going to see if we can ghetto mechanic put it back together and get it running. There's a very good chance I'm going to end up having to order up rings and more gaskets. So there's potentially a part two to this video. You ready to tear it apart? Yes! All right. So we turn it and we should be able to get it to pop out. Oh, that's pure water. Yeah, that's not a pretty sight. 
John, grab the camera and show them. Show them what it looks like down there. Yeah, that's not a pretty sight. But we're going to try anyway to revive this motor. Well, this is finishing draining out what we will call oil. Really, it looks like pond sludge. Let's see what we got going on in this spark plug hole. Very long threaded plug. There it goes. Oh yeah, it's got rust growing all over it. Uh, this keeps getting better and better. Let's check the other one, see if I got in that cylinder too. Oh yeah, it's got active rust on it, and it's wet, which means there's standing water inside there. This is not looking good. Hey, moment of truth. How horrific is the rat's nest? How much work does John have to do cleaning? Oh, that's quite horrible. Oh yeah. There we go. That's a nice one. Although ironically, I bought coils and there's not a bite mark on that one. And there's no bite marks on that one either. So I may have bought coils for no reason, but whatever. Cleaning time. Alright, I know there's going to be some internet monkey that's in the comments already saying, Oh, I just took a pipe wrench and I put it on the end and I gave it a crank over and it broke free on mine. Arr, arr, arr. Alright, so we're going to try it with the uh, spark plugs removed. And, yeah, that's not happening. It's a waste of time. To those of you who are not internet comment monkeys, sorry I wasted your time. Oh, we got the exhaust off. That looks amazing. And that does not look much better. Well, after setting the camera up in 28 Angles of Doom, which John thinks is a good horror film title, that has promise. There's almost no rust in there. And there's no rust on those. I can actually still feel oil residue on those. That has promise. We might luck out on this idea. Well, maybe we're going to have to do this with a bigger Olga. Well, it's a little scary that 250 pounds of Olga doesn't even budget at all. Let's go find a bigger Olga. All right, breaking out the big Olga. And we've got our SATA tool connector here. So we're going to put that to the test. And this is where we might break something. Prepare to see a grown man cry. That one broke free. Now it won't let go because it's stuck under the rocker. Got that to break free. Got that one to break free. Got that one to break free. John's over here flinching because he thinks the whole thing's gonna explode. It smells. It smells? Oh, you're right, it does smell. Yeah, that impact's been through hell and back. It, it doesn't smell so good anymore. All right, well. I cannot clear that rocker stud, so I guess I'm taking it out of there whether I want to or not, and we'll see if I can get shot in the face with a spring. 
These really shouldn't be too many foot-pounds underneath here, so we're going to see if I can hold it. Okay, that one wasn't bad. Okay. And... Oh yeah, that's right. The spring's got keepers on it. That was rather stupid of me to say. Who's already in the comments telling me how dumb I am? There we go. Now, we can get rid of the extension and get down on here. Pull that. Pull that. Done. Done. If you can tell, engines are not my normal thing to take apart. I probably should have a rubber mallet right now, but we're going to try the universal hammer. There it goes. That popped. Okay. Let's see what the universal hammer... Oh, that's water. Right there. That's water dripping out of the bottom of it. Let's see what we found. Oh yeah, there's water. Oh yeah. I'm sure you want to see how screwed those are. Well, actually, they're only slightly surface rusted. And it looks like they were in sealed position. So nothing got into there. So that might be savable. We're going to try. Just because. Because you needed to see this. What's in the bottom of this looks like something out of a baby diaper. Oh yeah, that's pitted on that side. We're going to have to hone that big time. All right. Well, let's do the other side. I'd like to give a shout out to another YouTuber that I watch. His name is Polar Bear Ed. Polar is in pulling something. He builds tractors that specifically use this particular engine. And he's a really nice guy. You should go check him out. I'll make sure there's a link for his YouTube channel in the description. Go subscribe. Tell him I sent you. Oil, oil, oil. Yep. We've got standing oil in there. So hopefully. Oh, I really should be marking exactly where the rocker came from and what it goes to but seriously this is not going to be one of those builds that one popped nice and easy that one popped nice and easy that one popped that one popped universal hammer to the back of the head And for all of you who want to see my misery, here you go. Oh yeah, that's got outright chunkies. Look at that. Well, we're going to try and make it run. We'll see. Here's the head. We're going to stick that into the parts cleaner and we'll come back to it later there you go you know you want to eat some of that it looks just like leftover brownies so I wanted to show you guys if you're ever working on something like this and you're trying to find the pitted spots from rust if you spray it down with brake cleaner, you can actually see the pitting where the brake cleaner polishes the nice surface and then darkens where the rust is. So I've got a really major pitted spot right there that I can actually fit my finger down into where this edge sat. And up and around here, there's another one on this side. And there's something right there, but I think I can sand it off in order to try and turn this thing. This side here stopped almost at the upper part. 
So I'm betting this was at the high point when it stopped. So we're going to thump this one down and see if it'll break everything free and go from there. This is why I wanted a dedicated room to doing this. Alright, this is a big episode of Do As I Say, Not As I Do. Really what we should do right now is we should rip this thing all the way down through, pull the crank, and then try and punch these through. But at this point, there's so much damage on this side that unless I can actually see these start to move, I'm not really worried about going any further. So we're going to give this a thump, try and set the rings. We're going to thump the other side and try and set the rings. And then we're going to crank on it. Got our table leg here. Okay, now give it some ugga here and see if it'll move. Oops, that's not moving. That's me going the wrong direction. Let's try that again, only this time let's go the right direction. Okay, with chain and correct orientation, take two. Now, we need to figure out a way to nail this sucker down somehow. We need to tie it off. Can I hold it? Uh, you're not going to be able to hold against my weight, unfortunately. Uh, let me see here. Nope, can't do that. Well, let's see if we can do this. Let's... That flywheel moved. Right there. It did move. Let's try it again. Well, we broke something, but it wasn't the engine. There we go. You can see that ridge right there where that is moved. So we're going to clean that up with a little bit of sandpaper. Then we're going to try and get this thing to rotate the other direction. As you can see, this one came up in just a little bit. And that is starting to seep down past the rings. So we're at least starting to eat into it with some PB Blaster. So we're going to clean that up, and we're going to try and rotate it the other way and bring this one back up out of there. Alright, let's try and get this thing to turn a little bit further. So we want this to come up. Come on! There! Aye. Aye. So that won't go down. But at least it went up. Can we go the other way? There we go. So the other side over here came all the way up. Let's see if we can show you that. That came all the way up. So, let's see if we can rock this thing a couple of times and get it to go and turn over, turn through. Almost. You got about a third of a rotation. About half of a rotation. Uh, start at the top. Give it a go. Well, we made it past three quarters. There we go. I got lifters on this side are moving. 
And I got lifters on this side are moving. Side one and two. So at this point, everything is moving. This has a massive section of pitting here. And on this side, we've got a giant pitting right here. But I really honestly think, considering the severity of how this was, that I say we hum chuck it together and see if it lives. Here's our trial and error. We've got it about one eighth vinegar, just regular household vinegar, and the rest is water. So we're gonna let it warm up for a little bit and then let it run for half an hour and we'll see what they look like afterwards as far as the rust is concerned. Hi right there, bug eye. What are we doing now? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? You're a lot of help. All right, it's day two. We've got the alignment pins pulled out. We're going to block this and get all of this grunge off of here. We've got to make sure to pull this because the inner filter is collapsing and disintegrating. So we're going to get that out of here while we're here right now. This is the only time that that filter is doable. So make sure if you order a kit that it has this and it has a piece of filter media in it. Now the kit that I have here is a universal kit. It's for horizontals and verticals. So it has the gaskets for all of the different styles of carburetors and the different styles of intakes. So be careful to go through and figure out exactly which one is yours. So at this point, sand and make it flat and scrape off gasket remains, clean it all up once more, replace this, same to the heads, and then start throwing it together. All right, so a blue scotch brite pad and just take your time going across and don't gouge into it, float it across, that's the big thing. Make sure you're not grinding down in, you're just floating. There we are, got a little more to go. All right, so this is just sitting on here. We've made sure that our head gasket is the correct size. Now there's a different size for 18 horsepower through 22 than it is for 25 and 27 horsepower. The other thing I wanted to note is that these heads will go on backwards, but there's a two and a one. So you can take this head and put it on this side and have the exhaust port going that direction. So we've got this all cleaned up in here. We're going to splash some oil down in here before we put it together. I've already poured about half a quart down through this. And we've got those cleaned off as good as we're going to care. And we're going to get this thing put together. Now, if you'd like a video filled with all kinds of torque specs and everything else, I'm sorry, that's not what this is. If you'd like to see it just thrown together, time lapse is about to start. Do you want to be like my dad and order up a manual and never decide to read it at all? Because if you want to, there's a link down below.
we go. All of that is hooked up. So this rod right here, this goes across and this goes to the choke. This rod right here comes across and that goes to the throttle. So all of that is moving. And one thing I like to point out to people is that almost always your throttle will have some little spring on it. The choke will not. That's one of the easiest five seconds, you know, 99 out of 100, that's going to be the way it is, is choke has no spring and throttle has a spring. Now... Those cylinders are filled up with some oil in them. Well, they're not filled, but they've got plenty in it that I don't want to try and set off with a spark plug in there. So we've got our booster pack here. I love these booster packs. They have a built-in air compressor and everything, and they are hardwired to these. There's no pushing any boost buttons. There's no nothing. They have a bigger version of this that they just sent me that has the pump and everything it weighs about twice as much as this thing does but it has one of those boost buttons so we've got a ground here we've got a positive right here on the starter solenoid we've got our punch button right there we've got our punch button to the positive so we're going to stand back and see if this thing will actually try to act up Whoa! Well, that tried to move. Let's clip this on again. That was quite the little kick. All right. Let's give it another little kick and let's see if it'll get the oil out. There we go. Yeah, right there on that curtain. And that is why it is our curtain is a throwaway sheet. All right, at this point, we need to check for spark and then see if we can put some bottle baby gas in there. All right, cylinder one spark plug test using a Briggs spark plug because Kohler. We got spark. John got oil in the face. Yep, come around this side. Cylinder two, spark plug test. We have spark. All right, we're one step closer.
Well, that was smoky, but thoroughly worth it. Thanks, guys, for watching. Now we got to figure out what we're going to put it in that we probably shouldn't.